Alright, in this lesson what we want to do is analyze this chart. And when we're all done analyzing the chart, we're going to come up with uh, the period, the domain, and the range for sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, uh, secant, and cosecant. Actually the range will, will forego some of these until we get to uh, chapter 2, so we're not going to be doing some of these, but, um, but some of the other stuff we will. Let's start with the period. So the definition of a period, a period means it's repeating. So let's first look at the chart here for the sine value, okay? And here's the category right here for the sine. And we want to look to see when it starts repeating. So it starts here at zero, and when I go through the chart in this format, even though I'm reading this as a, as a chart, um, like an XY table or uh, an Excel chart or a spreadsheet or whatever you want to call it. But when I think about it, what I'm doing is I'm thinking about going around the circle as I read the chart. So let me just kind of describe this to you because this will be super important when we get to chapter six. So we start here at zero and of course we go in the positive direction clockwise and then of course we have pi over two and we have pi. So I think of this in a circular format even though when I look at the chart you know I'm going downwards here. So I start at 0, pi over 2 is at the top of the circle, pi is at the far left, 3 of pi over 2 is at the bottom, and when we're back at 2 pi we're back where we started and we could keep going. Okay. So let's look at the chart this way. So we start at 0 and then we go to 1 half and then all the way up to 1 and then we start coming down and we're back at 0 but this is negative 1 half the next one so I'm not really repeating yet so I have negatives, negative 1, negatives, now I'm back at 0 and if I were to continue around then it would start repeating so we say that the period of the sign is 2 pi because at one full complete revolution of the circle you are getting um, I don't want to say you're getting unique sine values, but um, you are, uh, even though it's re repeating some of the values, it's not repeating the pattern. So the whole pattern does not start repeating until you get all the way around the circle and then start again. So think of it as the pattern of repeat. The other way to think of it is um, if you're thinking about running, running around on a track, um, you know, so you pass this like a mile marker, mile marker, and mile marker, and so these things should look the same. Obviously, when you go all the way around the track and you start going through it again, um, so that might be another way to to start thinking about that. All right, cosine. We when we do the same thing with the cosine, the cosine starts at one, and then it decreases until we get to zero at pi over two and then decreases further with the negatives until we get to negative one and then increases until we get to zero and increases again until we get to one and then it starts repeating. So the period of the cosine is also two pi. Okay. So now let's look at the tangent a minute. Um, the tangent starts at zero here and we're up to 1 and then we go to uh, up at pi over 2 where it's undefined and then it starts decreasing until we're at 0 and then it starts increasing again at pi over 3. So let me just kind of shade this in a color. So if you look at these values here for tangent and then you look at these values here for tangent. Oh, I just scribbled all over the top of everything. They are exactly the same. In other words, it kind of looks like I have a repeat of the whole pattern twice in the circle. And exactly, um, that's correct, I do. So we say that the pattern or the period of tangent is pi because you get two of the repeats of the patterns within one whole circle of of the unit circle there. So now let's look at the cotangent. 
and I think if you look at the cotangent you're going to see a similar kind of pattern. It starts at undefined okay, from 0 to pi and then if you analyze from pi up to but not including 2 pi you'll notice that those are also a repeat. So this, uh, the same logic for the period of tangent also holds for cotangent so we say the period of the cotangent is also pi. Now let's look at the secant a minute and the cosecant. And it might also help to remember, oops, let's get rid of that. Might also help to remember that the secant of an arc is equal to 1 over the cosine. That might help you think about the think about the period. And likewise the cosecant, oops, the cosecant of an arc is equal to 1 over the sine of an arc. Okay. So the secant, let's look at the secant first here. So the secant starts at 1 and then it looks like it's increasing and increasing until we get to some undefined and then it jumps to negative 2, increases to negative 1, and then increases again to undefined and then we're back to 1. So the pattern of that is all unique, but if I started around the circle again, then I would start repeating this pattern. And then likewise, you might think because the secant is the reciprocal of the cosine, that probably their periods are going to be related, and they are. So the period of the secant is 2 pi. And then likewise with the cosecant, you can examine that chart on your own, and the period of that is also 2 pi. All right, so there's the period. Now let's talk about the domains a minute. And remember the domain is all the stuff that x can be, and x, recall, is our arc. So it's all the values of the arcs, or all the places of an arc, where you get a valid um, output. So just to draw the circle again here, okay. Be just the best circle I ever drew on here. Interesting. Okay. So let's look at the sign a minute and then try and determine the domain. So when zero goes in, um, when zero goes in as my arc, then I've got uh, an output of zero. Okay, here's zero. And then you can just glance through here yourself. Let's jump to pi over two. We get an output of one pi, we get an output of 0. So for all of these values from 0 to 2 pi, you get some output. You get a valid output. Okay, So that tells me that the domain is all real numbers. And remember, numbers is just a number. These are arcs we're talking about. You can think of it as all real number arcs. Maybe that would help. Um, and of course, you keep going around and around the circle. So no matter art, what all excuse me, no matter what arc I put in, I get out a value, so that tells me that the sign is valid, the domain of the sign is all real numbers. Likewise, you're going to get the same thing with the cosine. No matter what arc length I put in, I get a cosine out. Alright, and now let's let's think about the tangent a minute. Okay? So the tangent is of x is defined as the sine of x over the cosine of x. And when we already went through this, you realize that the sine, I'm sorry, the tangent is undefined in some area. So let's look to see where it is uh, undefined. So it's undefined right here and right here. So it's undefined at pi over 2 and it's undefined at 3 pi over 2. Let's draw these on our circle. So pi over 2, undefined. 3 pi over 2, also undefined. And if I went around again, um, this would be 5 pi over 2. And if I keep going in the positive direction, this would be 7 pi over 2. And if I keep going around again, this would be 9 pi over 2, so on and so forth. So every time I land on a pi over 2, or 3 pi over 2, 
um, as an arc length, I do not have an output because it's undefined there. All the other places I have an output, so I have a valid domain there. So the way we write a domain, if it's not all real numbers, you would write x cannot equal, um, and this means that everything else is valid except for what I put here, and x cannot equal uh, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, let's continue this right here, 5 pi over 2, um, 7 pi over 2, and so on. So the way that we would write this is x cannot equal pi over 2 plus k times pi. And why k times pi? Because the distance between change colors here, the distance between the pi over two and the pi is uh, or pi over two and three pi over two. That distance is is pi. So for every when we start at pi over two, every time I add a pi, I'm at a location where where the tangent is not valid. So the domain, I'm never going to write that in that small little spot there. So I'll just put a little x, a little box around it right here. So the domain of the tangent is all real numbers except pi over 2 plus k pi. Alright, so with the same, um, actually before we do cotangent, let's go ahead and do um, secant because secant and tangent are kind of the same. They're kind of the same because they are undefined in those same locations. So this is the domain for the tangent. It is also the domain for the secant. So we have that one. We got that one done. I'm just going to put little check marks there. You can fill that in. Now let's do the cotangent. So let me erase some stuff here. Tracer's not working. There we go. Okay, so cotangent is similar, um, but slightly different. So let's do some of this here. Alright, change to the pen. Alright, so where is the cotangent undefined? Well, let's go ahead and circle those. So the cotangent's undefined at zero and undefined at pi. Um, go ahead and fill back in our circle here. I'll move through this one a little quicker. Zero and pi, it's undefined. And well, let's fill back in the circle. Zero and pi. Okay, so x cannot be 0 or pi or 2 pi or 3 pi or 4 pi or so on and so forth. So the distance between all of those is pi, right, from 0 to pi the distance is pi. So we can write that it's all real numbers except k times pi. And in this case I don't have to write 0 plus k times pi because if k equals 0, well then 0 times pi is 0. So in this case I can just write x cannot equal k pi. And in all of these cases here, uh, I think we covered this in the last section, you can write where k is an element, dot, 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 of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, dot, dot, dot. In other words, k is an integer. Alright, so there's the domain of that. And then the last thing we want to cover is the range. And the range are your outputs. And the way I like to think of range when I'm talking about trig is I like to think of highs and lows. So let's just... Uh, quickly look at our chart a minute. And um, if 
for sine and cosine. So um, the outputs uh, outputs range from a low of if you look in the chart, you're going to see negative one is your lowest, and you're going to see positive one as your highest. So let's find those a minute. Pick yellow. So my lowest, here we go, there's my lowest negative one and my highest right there at positive one. All right, so for the range, uh, let's write it over here. Let's write an interval notation. So from negative one to one, that's my range, and that's the range of the sine. And then likewise, the same thing is gonna hold for cosine. I have one is my largest number, negative one is my smallest number. So the outputs, um, again, same thing, negative one to one for the sine and the cosine. So that's the end of this part, just analyzing the chart for period, domain, and range.